previously on Balls. So Ronaldo, how's it? Vieira. Hi. Vieira. Lecho Le 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 Do you mind if I call you Vieira through this interview and then next time I interview I'll have your name absolutely comfort <laughs> teaching me, you know, the right way to say this. Uh, it's, yeah, I'll give you more time to be able to pronounce it. It's terrible, isn't it, mate? How yeah, can, how can I be fun. like that? But I am I am trying. I've just me? been saying, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm working hard on my Sepedi. But uh, what, what's your what, what, what's yeah, your yeah. language, um, uh, Lecho Nolo? Lechonolo uh, means blessing in, in Sepedi. That's and right, blessing that's in Sepedi. I, I'm learning some of these Sepedi words. I love it. But when did they first start calling you? When did you first hear someone call you Vieira? I want to know that. Uh, I was playing for an academy in Jerba, Africa Sport uh, uh, Youth Development Academy. And um, our technical director there, uh, started calling me Vieira when, when maybe three months when I, when I started at the academy. Oh, so how and, long ago was it? How old uh, were you then? I was 12. I moved to the academy when I was 12. So in 2004. <laughs> so ever since then, everyone's been calling me Vieira. <laughs> Love it, mate. Uh, and I actually uh, copied Patrick Vieira in when you had such an effective um, African... Champions League debut on last Saturday against Samalek. I copied Patrick Vieira in and he did reply saying, who is this guy? <laughs> so it's great that Patrick Vieira is now aware that you are South Africa's Vieira. Um, so how, how did it feel? Uh, as I understand it, Andila Jolly was struggling almost from the first minute uh, on Saturday night against Samalek. And, and then you, you know that you have to go on and play against one of the top sides in Africa. Uh, were you nervous or, or was it uh, you know, something that you're quite accustomed to coming on in those kind of situations? You know, as a footballer, you have to be prepared to come on at any moment because anything can happen in a football match. And I can't really say I was nervous because I helped uh, reach the group stages when we beat TP Mazembe when no one expected us to beat them. And, I mean, they had players that had won the African Championship before players like their captain who was on the wanted list of teams like Arsenal. So to do well against Tupi Mazembe made it a bit easier against Zamalek, where at least I knew that I, I, I was good enough to complete, to compete against the best in Africa. So I wasn't really nervous. I think I was a bit more nervous when we played Tupi Mazembe than when we played uh, Zamalek over the region. Sure. I mean, the TP Mazembe game remains one of the miracles of modern football to go through what you went that day. That's, that was some debut with all the TV yeah. camera boycotts and, and, and Lucky Lequati's red card, yeah. two penalties, Senzo, the penalty king that day. Has it been, uh, is this you know the, the, the best season of football that you've enjoyed since those days when you were 14 and thinking you might make it? Is this the dream you're now living? Uh, I can't really say this is the dream that I'm living because I, I hope things get better from, from here. Yeah. But obviously, as a young boy, uh, you know, it, it's a real child's dream in South Africa to play, to play for a team like Alona Paris. And for me to be here is, a, is an honor. And um, it, it's a privilege because, you know, it doesn't happen to everyone. So I'm enjoying it, but honestly speaking, I can't say I've arrived or this is the end of things. I think I still need to push myself and hopefully things can get a bit better from here. Fucking brilliant, mate. That's exactly the kind of thing that we want to hear. Um, Roger Dessar, tough guy, easy guy, uh, normal kind of guy. What, 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 what can you tell us in a sentence about the Roger Dessar style of management? You know, Roger Dessar for me, personally, because I've worked with him even before, but I think he's, uh, you know, he's everything in one. And I'm not trying to maybe uh, say things that he's not. You know, I feel like when it's time for him, for him to be, you know, that leader or to put that foot down, he does that. When it's time to joke around and so on, he does that. And I think he's so, he has so many characters in himself. Mm. You can't really say he's a joker or he's a serious guy or whatever. I think he's all in one and I think that's good for the team. That's about the best description of Roger Desai I've ever heard. He is, like you say, I mean, sometimes you phone him and I think he's going to actually punch me somehow over the phone. And other times, <laughs> yeah, yeah, other times yeah. he, he's a yippee man and, and always accessible.
a hard time, high pressure job, high pressure for all of you. Is there anything that surprised you? Now you've kind of started to hit that top level. You, you, you know, Roger, as Roger said the other night, you know, it was like you were born to play in Africa. How much does the pressure get to, to a young player like yourself who, who's come through the ranks? How difficult is it to adapt? We can't ask Wayne Rooney this. We can't ask Neymar or Messi because we never get to speak to them personally on air. All the, all the interviews are stage yeah. managed. Here's one of our top young players talking live on air. What's it like when you get up there? What's it, I know you haven't quite, you know, you're saying you have to work to get further. But how do you feel now? How difficult is it to keep your feet on the ground? I come, I come from a very happy so it's always going to be easy to, you know, keep my feet on the ground. Um, I have people around me who criticize me a lot, you know, even, for example, the people from the academy that were with me back then still give me a call and give me a, a bit of stick with my performance and, uh, my, my perfor- performance and so on. So, yeah. you know, it's never like, you know, sometimes, in all honesty, I get amazed up to the reviews I get because when I get home, it's a totally different story. It's always about where I can improve, what I can do better, and so on. So I, 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 the people that really matter and give me advice have never given me the impression that I'm the finished article. And they always give me things that I need to work on. And so for me, I, I don't think that maybe sometimes I don't think I'm as good as people, other people say I am. I just need to keep on improving on things and hopefully I'll get better as time goes on. Brilliant. But to be honest, I feel I feel amazing. Like I said, it's not every child who gets to play for, uh, you know, Orlando Pirates. And for me, there's no pressure. Every day is a new day where I learn different things. And the more I do, well, the better it gets. Mate, can you tell me in, in a couple of sentences... Where is your humble background? You know, where where did you grow up? Where where were your first kind of kickings of a tennis ball? Uh, I I grew up in Pulugwan, and I'm from Cheslop. It's a township outside of Pulugwan in the Limpopo province, uh, not Alexander and Joburg. I don't know who uh, said I was from there, but anyway, it's fine. So that's where I'm from. It's about three four hundred kilometers from Johannesburg in the north of South Africa. I'm so glad you put me right on that. It's, the problem is you, you, you go into these profiles and that we, we don't know much about, about the players apart from what we can find on the internet. And, and, and there it says you were from Alexandria. I thought they meant Alexandria in Egypt. Uh, but then when I, look, <laughs> when I look more carefully, you come from my favourite part of the world, which is Limpopo. And, 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 and going up there, I went to the ZCC, um, the ZCC stuff there at Easter and, and yeah, had a great yeah. time and, and got to, to know the warmth and the depth of the people around Polokwane and up in those mountains up the back there. So that is your background, yeah. Turf Loop in Polokwane. And yeah. I, mean, I know you say you've come a long way from there, but isn't it a hotbed of great footballers? I'd like to believe so, because, you know, the likes of Shoes Michelle who come from there, uh, legends such as uh, Jesse Queen, Lohodi come from there, and a lot of footballers are from there. So even my teammate, Joe Soler, is from there. Tabo Matabe is also from there. So maybe they have the decent amount of talent coming from there. Mate, I need your knowledge so badly. I, it's hard. In England, you've always got a potted history of every player and, and you can find out you know exactly where they're from, which academy they went to, all that kind of thing. So I'm going to be phoning you next time I hear of a youngster from Polokwane. I'll be calling you as well. Listen, mate, best of luck. How do you feel about... I, I mean, I, I don't... Uh, what's the latest on Andila Jolly? Do we have any idea on his fitness at all? Uh, unfortunately, I'm not a physio. <laughs> no? True, true. So I don't think I can give you anything. <laughs> oh, OK, but... I don't know. But, but, I mean, I, I tried to phone... I, it's difficult because Roger was also in training like you were this morning. Um, yeah. There's a good chance that you'll be involved in the Soweto derby. Will that be your first? Yes, that'll be my first Soweto derby. And should it happen, I'll be very, very uh, honoured and I'll be willing to, to put in time, put in, to give my best, you know, throughout the match. And hopefully, you know, to give to, to help the team, you know, get a good result against Kazi Chiefs, which is a very good team. But then again, it's a sort of and anything can happen. <laughs> uh, mate, 
Ninety thousand. What's the biggest crowd you've ever played in front of before Saturday? I think fifty thousand. I was still playing at Bidmissford, and we were playing Alana Pirates in the cup final. Yes, they of course. Just three one. Uh, that's the biggest I've ever played in. Great, and so this so will should be. Should I play? Should I play on Saturday? This will be the biggest ever. Mate. Absolutely, almost twice the size of that crowd in that cup yeah. final. Mate, will it affect you? When you're on the field, are you able to cut out the noise? I know some players can completely cut out the background noise. Some players are, are revved up by it and, and, and enthused by it. Will you ignore Will you ignore the noise or will it uh, fire you up? You know, I've, I've played in front of 50,000 uh, and none of those, maybe only 1,000 were supporters of business work. So if there's 95,000 and half of those <laughs> are, are supporting me as well and cheering me on and not forgetting the millions on television as well, yeah. I, I can only get fired up, you know, and it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, that's the, that's the perfect answer, mate. Listen, Lechonolo Vieira Masalesa. It's been lovely talking to you. Yeah. I, I would like to talk to you again as, as your season progresses. We, we, we Obviously, we're in touch with Gordon and Clive Barker and all that. But you always look for players that kind of naturally fit the stage. You've been around a while. You've, you, you're facing your first Soweto derby. The very best of luck to you. And some great quotes that I'll be getting hold of later and putting out to, to all my followers. Well done, mate. Nice to talk to you. Uh, uh, thank you so much. And I hope I'll give you more reasons to want to talk to me. Excellent, mate. That's what I want. Good stuff. Okay. Thanks. Cheers. Good luck. Saturday. Okay. Okay. Thanks, man. Yeah. See, Comfort, I tried to say it again there and I fucking failed again. Lechrononolo. But Vieira it is. What a nice man. What a okay, nice cool. chat. Yeah, hey, I'm how cool was that? <laughs> See, I, I mean, I interviewed, not not personally, but in, in press conference situations, Beckham, Giggs over the years. Uh, who were the... Um, who are the guys that are, you know that you really try to talk to? Cricket, it's fine. I mean, uh, Andrew Flintoff was always easy right from the start. Rugby, you could speak to to to, to Lawrence Delalio, Martin Johnson. Not easy to speak to Martin Johnson. He often used to hit me. Um, but young footballers are very hard to get hold of in England. So Alex Ferguson, Arsene Wenger, very very protective. You, you never got to speak to Cesc Fabregas on your own. And yet here's a lad, right? He's our Patrick Vieira. He's he's ex fits gone with Roger. You know, he knew Roger then. He's gone now to Pirates. Made that I think I think that was his breakthrough moment for me the, the Zamalek game obviously TP Mazembe but we never got to see any of that yeah. because they they banned us from watching it to to speak to a player at this young developmental stage and hear him so level headed so humble and saying look it's not going to go to my head because the people that matter they'll tell me I need to improve and 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 I love that and I, I think that was probably you know one of my favourite interviews that so far in our eight or nine weeks of of bollocks. How did you feel covered? Does it make you encouraged by Orlando Pirates' future? Yeah. He's <laughs> 21, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. This is Bulls Visual Radio.